speaker, the very, very pioneering Mr. Unnath Verma, who's currently the managing director, Pizza Hut for the Indian subcontinent, as we all know, Yum Restaurants International. He, in fact, will be sharing his perspectives on how brands need to harness the mobile and the millennials. So let's have a huge round of applause to welcome on stage Mr. Unnath Verma. So good morning, everybody. Uh, it's, it's ironical that I'm, you know, speaking in front of you for a couple of reasons. Um, one is that uh, when I was uh, the marketing leader for my brand, I, was, I ran KFC as a marketing leader for, a, for about five years when I joined this company. Uh, there was nothing called digital marketing. There was nothing called social marketing. I ran, you know, the brand between 2006 and 2011, where digital marketing was just about starting up, right? So it wasn't kind of... Uh, uh, the mainstay of connecting with consumers. And so I grew up and I did marketing in an era where none of this existed. That's one. Second is, uh, uh, so far in the last three years, where the real transformation has happened on the digital space, on different mediums of, of how you can use mobile technologies to connect with consumers, I've actually been sitting in, in your place and uh, trying to build my know-how, trying to you know just catch up with all the millennials. Obviously, I'm not a millennial, right? Um, and then, I mean, the last thing I expected was for me to come and share with millennials in the room how, you know, what is my perspective on, on mobile marketing. So you can imagine in the last 48 hours, I would have done a lot of reading and, you know, researching and know-how building and all of that. And so, uh, pardon me if I don't understand some of the terms that you guys are very familiar with, uh, but we'll get started. Um, and uh, just, just before that, I, when... Uh, when Anurag kind of introduced the session and he said, uh, you know, keep tweeting and keep sharing your, you know, uh, point of view about the co conference, um, tweet more and win more and stuff like that. It just reminded me of how times have changed. Uh, when we guys, and at least till some years back, right, we used to go into meeting rooms with a lot of people over there. We would say, please shut down your mobile phones and all eyes and ears facing towards me so that I can understand that you're all connected with me, right? Those times have changed. Now you know that people are not going to look at you. They could be listening to you, but they could be listening to what you are saying, which is getting live telecast on the mobile phone, and their eyes are over there, but they are still connected with the meeting. So times have changed, and obviously some of us need to kind of, uh, you know, adapt ourselves with changing times. Uh, so that's me. I've been with the company for uh, about, now it's going to be 13 years. Uh, lots has changed. Um, and I'll share with you my perspective, and also the perspective of how Pizza Hut as a brand is leveraging some of these uh, you know, opportunities in the mobile space. So first of all, let's start with the millennials. Uh, all of us understand demographically, right, uh, what millennials are. Um, and just so that we are all on the same page, millennials are, are uh, you know, uh, individuals born between 1981 to 1996. So they could be between uh, 1990, I mean, 22 years of age to about 37 years of age. And I'm clearly a decade ahead of that. Uh, a decade behind or whatever, right? So, uh, uh, so, the, uh, so that's, you know, demographics. That's the age. Um, what was surprising for me was uh, two facts. So first of all, they constitute about half the working population that we have in India, right? So uh, I think 90% of people in this room um, are, uh, demographically speaking, millennials, right? So you constitute... Uh, about half the working population. But the other stark data is that the earlier generation that had a savings record of 35%, so 35% of the income was put into savings, millennials actually put only 10% of the earnings into savings. Now that means that millennials are spending a lot much, lot much more in comparison to the people of the you know, previous generation. And they're also the largest part of the working population. So data, all of us know data, we are all on the same page. In fact, you would know many more data points than, than I would. But more importantly, we have to understand the mindset of the millennial. And I hope this slide moves to the next one. Which way do I have to point this? Over there, here. Oh, yeah, okay, there we got it. So, I've tried to capture the mindset of the millennials in this very interesting abbreviation. Do you, does, has anyone heard of this? If yes, raise your hands. If you haven't, 
Okay, so the millennial mindset is captured in this particular uh, acronym, which is, I want what I want when I want it. I'll repeat that. I want what I want when I want it. That is the generation that is hungry. It's here and now. It is talking about maximizing experiences today. They don't want to wait for tomorrow. And we believe that some of these uh, mindsets actually get captured as insights or trends that brands need to understand. So either we have you know, brands here in the audience who are looking for how do we connect with consumers using mobile, or we also have, we, we largely have a lot of, you know, agency partners here, digital agency partners, etc., who would then go back with recommendation to brands of how to connect with the consumers, right? So, so that is the starting point, and this is one particular, you know, simple way of capturing the mindset of the millennial. Now, what are the key trends? I've captured six key trends that I believe are relevant, at least to our business, right? And uh, in some sense, a little bit away from our business. But please look at this from your own lens in terms of what could be relevant for you. So let's get started. First of all, we know uh, the first trend is life on demand. Everything has to be on demand. And here I'll just share a personal experience. Um, I'm like Anurag. I, I went to an engineering college after my school. And uh, when you're living in a hostel, you don't have access to television. And television, basically, you, you, you enjoy some programs. That was not the age of Netflix or or Amazon Prime, or you know Sony Live uh, as well, and so um, so we actually you know grew up in the age where like I used to be very fond of watching the Mahabharat, and it used to come between 10 a.m. and 12 p.m. on a Sunday morning, and I see a few nodding heads over there. Now, by the way, at the same time, I used to have an engineering class, and I had the record of 70% uh, you know class misses because of Mahabharat. Now, had it been for today's times, I would have said I can still attend my engineering class and I can watch Mahabharat. So there is a lot of on-demand that can happen today. Times have dramatically changed. So what is all, what, what all is on demand today? Uh, all of us know media is on demand. Entertainment is on demand. There is huge services on demand. I can, I mean, Uber and Ola have been spoken about a lot uh, over the last few years. There are all kinds of services, plumbing, you know, carpentry, maid cleaning services, everything is on demand. Everything is on, is on an app right now. There is education on demand. We've all heard of, or some of us would have heard of Coursera. I have heard of this term in the last 24 hours. And by the way, uh, it's amazing how, how millennials are saying that, listen, I need to do my education, but I will do it at my own pace. I will do it at a place of my convenience. I will not leave my home. I will not go to the institute, but I will do it online. And the list just goes on. So this is the generation or this is the environment or the time when we are living on on demand you know requirement of the millennials and i have a, a short video that captures a very nice story inspiration from brazil there are thousands of ways to learn new recipes even so one in three youngsters don't know how to cook and this moment keeps happening a lot through all ages mostly because people have no idea what to do with the ingredients they find in their fridge. But if there's Hellman's, there is a way. Hellman's presents What's Cook, the first live recipe service using WhatsApp. Just send us your number in our website, and our chefs get in touch with you. Through the biggest social network in Brazil, Hellman's connects people to real chefs who are prepared to teach how to cook using exactly what you have in your refrigerator. You just have to take a picture and instantly they come up with a delicious recipe with Hellman's and teach you how to do it step by step. Do you think it's hard? They send images. Still hard? They send videos. They even draw pictures. And hey, they also let you know when it's time to take the food out of the oven. What's Cook is an alternative recipe storytelling that keeps inspiring people with new ways to use Hellman's mayonnaise on their dishes. But in a one-to-one -one real life experience using WhatsApp. Even being launched only on Hellman's social networks, more than 8,000 people signed up for the service in less than two weeks. 
With less than $900 invested on media, What's Cook was globally shared and impacted more than 4 million people. In addition to heartwarming messages, each user spent an average of 65 minutes chatting and cooking with our chefs, resulting in thousands of happy consumers and more than 500 dishes proudly shared with us. Only Hellman's can bring you What's Cook, a delicious way to use technology when people need the most when they're hungry. So, uh, an example of how you could use WhatsApp uh, beyond our, you know, forwarding videos and like Anurag mentioned, you know, sharing some false news. Uh, clearly an example for packaged food businesses, but when you go back and think of using WhatsApp, like right now we've been struggling, they have opened their APIs, but in a limited manner, how do I engage, how do I interact with my consumers using WhatsApp? For now we are getting Book My Show, you know, um, um, what do you call those alerts on, on WhatsApp, but that is absolutely at the base of using the awesome power of some of these uh, you know, social platforms. So that was one example. Let's go to the second trend. Um, yep, social validation. All of, us, uh, all of us know this is a huge trend, right? It's been a trend for a very long time. My daughter, she's 16 years, every Sunday, so she runs a YouTube channel every Sunday morning. She goes into her room, locks herself up, you know, makes a new video. She's hugely passionate about fashion, and she puts her content, content on YouTube. And then her, her entire, you know, uh, evaluation of how strong the content is, is a function of how many likes has she got in the first hour and the second hour. And after the second hour, it's a, it's a lost case. So if she hasn't broken her previous world week's record, it's a very, very poor content. She goes into depression, right? So this is what is happening. You put a you know, post up on Facebook or Instagram, and that is the first thing you're looking at. How many people have liked it, they have noticed it, and how does my social currency grow with all of that? Uh, the other part is also true, which is that uh, you look at, uh, so in the earlier age, for buying anything or using a service, when you were confused between choices, you would go to people who were known to you and you would go and ask them about their experiences. Now, you look at strangers on the platform. You don't know them, but you really value their comments and their, their feedback on the system, right? And so, uh, this is all that is known. The question is, what, do, what can we do with what we know? And here is an example. It's an outstanding example of how you can use, um, you know, so food is a very popular uh, subject on Instagram. And here is an example of how you can use food to connect with your consumers on Instagram. So that was a restaurant that used user-generated content to basically help people decide uh, what have their friends liked in the same place, right? That's very powerful as compared to going after, oops, I need to go back to this. Uh, as compared to going, uh, you, know, you know, having a traditional way of saying chef recommends this dish, it is much better to say my friends recommend this, this dish. Uh, so that's the other way you can use the platform. Uh, the third trend is a huge one, right? Uh, with the coming in of uh, technology and, uh, and so many products and services in the marketplace, really what's happened, the aspiration levels in our country have dramatically increased. And when I say this generation is about I want what I want, when I want it, I waited uh, 20 years, uh, maybe a little less, 15 years to buy my first luxury car, right? Today, people don't want to wait that much. 
I invested in a property. It was a big achievement for me that I have arrived in life that I have invested in a property. That is not a big deal today. Today, consumers want to use the experiences. They want the experiences without, you know, waiting, without having to wait for it. So what do we know about it? We know that there is, of course, this entire, you know, um, ride sharing that is so popular. There are rental spaces that are, again, you know, on sharing that are so popular. There are holiday homes. Airbnb is one of the largest hotel chains in the world without owning a single property. That is a huge, you know, part of the business. The sharing can be actually extrapolated. Whatever, imagine if you have an item which is high on desire and is very high on uh, value barrier that is absolutely ripe for, uh, the sh for, for a sharing economy to uh, take over. And so think of, uh, I mean, ladies in the room would love, the, all of you love these luxury bags, right? The Louis Vuittons and the Gucci's and stuff like that. There are a lot of people who, who, who have the desire to have a bag that matches their wardrobe, which is different from yesterday, different today and different, you know, tomorrow. But how many of us can afford that? And imagine how this, this particular ecosystem can dramatically open up if there was a sharing economy also on that space. And as we are speaking, there could be something already in the marketplace or some few, you know, smart cookies could be thinking about an idea. So that's the power of a sharing economy. The example that I'm going to share with you is what Mercedes has done. And let's look at the video and then I'll come and talk to you about how they have adapted to this particular, you know, mega trend and the change that is happening. You might not share the same taste. You might not have the same daily routines. Ouch. Rough night, huh? Good morning, everybody. You might want to share everything. Mmm. Hashtag yummy. What's up? Or you might not want to share everything with everybody. That's all right. But there's one thing you can now share quite easily. Just request it. Anyone in the car? No. Nope. No. Accept it. Go get it. You don't have to own it to make it your own. Car sharing with the new Mercedes Benz user experience. So, watch this. Is it a new car? No, it's not a new car. It's a new technology interface. This is a keyless car. You don't have to have keys to access the car. This car is operated digitally. This car is authorized to be shared amongst the group of friends or family. And depending upon who needs the car, the key is activated through a mobile app. And when you get inside the car, there is a permanent key to start the engine, which is already inside the car. So there's a complete line of new vehicles which doesn't have a new engine configuration, a new chassis, or new tires, or new technology. It only has a new interface. And the interface is using mobiles to unlock the car in a shared world and let, you know, seven or eight or ten people together co-own the vehicle. Now imagine what this can unlock, or an idea like this can unlock for our respective categories or the clients that you have back, back there. All right. So that's the... Um, that's the other mega trend. The, the next mega trend is uh, voice versus text. Now, all of us know that voice intuitively is far more easy, right? When you, it's, it's easier than, than typing. Uh, voice is uh, faster. You speak at least three or four times um, uh, in the same minute or same duration as compared to typing the same content, right? So you, it's, it's far, far more faster. And a lot of uh, action is happening in this category, of course, of late with Amazon Echo. You have the Google Assistant. You have the Apple Siri. The entire ecosystem has dramatically changed on voice. In fact, uh, I, I, I hope I'm quoting this right. Google said that their search on voice... So they always had voice search available in English language. It did not make any headway because the people who were, um, you know, proficient with English language were already on search. They were already using Google and they were habituated to using text. But when they actually unlocked Hindi as a language, the search volumes jumped some 400% or something. And actually now 30% of the overall search volumes are voice-based thanks to opening up Hindi 
as an interface, right? So that is very, very powerful. This video I'm sure all of you will be familiar with, but it's always a pleasure to watch it whenever you see it. Alexa, alarm off. Alexa, what's on the calendar today? You have 12 events scheduled. Alexa, call me an Uber. Your Uber will arrive in two minutes. Alexa, what's the weather like today? There's a 100% chance of showers. Alexa, pair my Bluetooth speaker. Okay, paired. Alexa, it's time to reorder some paper towels. Okay, order placed. And Alexa, play my garage music. Playing your garage playlist from Prime Music. Alexa, listen jazz. Playing smooth jazz from Prime Music. Alexa, who's this? This is Picnic Basket by Lala Tone. Alexa, turn that up. Hey, isn't that Jason Schwartzman? No, that's not him. I would know if that was him. I'm pretty sure it's him. Okay, Alexa, who stars in Mozart in the Jungle? Stars include Malcolm McDowell, Jason Schwartzman. Ha! See? <laughs> I was right. Alexa, change the bedroom temperature to 65 degrees. Okay. Alexa, lights off. Okay. Alexa, good night. Good night. Sleep tight. So soon we'll have a time when we'll have a new kind of friend. Right? You'll say goodnight to new kind of people out there in the room. Uh, that's the way things are changing. And uh, again, we've got to ask our questions. I keep asking myself, uh, can we integrate, right? Can we say, Alexa, order a pizza? And it kind of goes through. Uh, and yeah, it's, we're not very far away from doing that. All right. The, the next trend um, is, uh, is virtual reality. Now, uh, this particular trend basically points us to customer experience. Um, the customer experience is, uh, is taking a huge center stage at this point of time. And the brands that have been at the leading edge of totally, you know, dramatically uh, step-changing the customer experience has suddenly come into, uh, you know, the consideration set. So, for example, the, uh, the Mercedes car that you saw is not a new product. It is a new customer experience. Um, when we look at our own businesses, right, uh, we, we have the... We have the best pizzas, and I'm not making any marketing spiel here, but we have the best pizzas. The answer is yes. Do we have the best customer experience? In most cases, yes, because we deliver our pizzas uh, in under 30 minutes. Now, to have a great pizza to be delivered under 30 minutes is table stakes to be in the business. Now, what we are looking at is what is the next level of engagement we can have with consumers and totally step change, address the unmet needs or friction points that can unlock customer experience. So we are not thinking about new pizzas. We are not thinking about new toppings. We are not thinking about new sauces. We are thinking customer experience. And this is an outstanding example of saying that there's virtual reality that so far has been used only for gaming, right? You, have the, you had those goggles, you put them on your, you know, over the eyes, and you had a virtual, you know, reality experience, and you said, wow, I had a great 30-minute game. Now, can, can brands use the power of virtual reality and the consumer experience they want to totally you know bring into the system to transform that engagement with consumers and drive huge loyalty let me show an example of ikea the way they are doing it hey ikea would like everyone to know about place our new augmented reality app Built on Apple's new AR kit, you can easily place two to scale 3D models of IKEA furniture in your place. Scan, browse, select, move, and place. So that could mean less of this. And less of this and probably more of this. We want to make it easier for people everywhere to imagine a better place. Share this place and this place. 
Try plays in your place. Yes. All right. That's virtual reality for us. The last, uh, you know, trend, uh, at least from our perspective, is this all? Is this piece about hyperlocal? So we didn't realize that uh, actually uh, half the search that uh, that uh, consumers, particularly millennials, do is for near me services or products. Hair salon near me, petrol pump near me, restaurants near me, pizza near me. Half the search volume is uh, near me, and. Uh, and there was a period when we guys were like totally oblivious to the near me opportunity. Um, our data was not right. Our contact numbers were outdated. Um, our stores had shut down, but the data still existed there. And so there was complete harakiri happening on the ground. But when we realized the potential of near me and we step changed that, that has led to some amazing results. So I have a video a little later in my presentation that I will talk to you about Pizza Hut's journey on transforming near me. But the reality is that half the search happens uh, for, for products or services near me. And if your listings are right, if your data is right, and if the user reviews are right, data suggests, I'm not saying that, it suggests that 50% of searches convert into a purchase in the first 24 hours. Now, isn't that powerful? And if it is, then as brands or as consultants to brands, can we look at this particular aspect of our business, right? And try and see how can we become more and more relevant. Even a packaged food, Lay's potato chips near me, I mean, it might not be important because you have Lay's potato chips all over the place, right? But just in case you have a great deal running with two of the stores in the two kilometer radius, you might want to say, buy five, get one free at my nearby supermarket. And so being aware of the power of near me and trying to connect it to the latest, most relevant offers in the zone that consumers live in is a huge opportunity for businesses. Uh, here I will share the video that I just mentioned about, which is Pizza Hut experience, uh, just in a bit. So how does all of this add up for uh, the brand that I lead right now? Pizza Hut uh, has been in a in a phase of massive, massive transformation. Uh, this is the world's largest pizza chain. And again, like I'm, I'm not making a selling pitch here. I'm just talking about the transformation that the brand has had, right? Uh, we used to be a special occasion brand. We used to have these extremely large stores, fantastic quality pizzas, drinks, sides, desserts. But the more important thing that was layering on top of that was a great customer experience. You came to Pizza Hut for your special occasions. You came for your birthday, you came for the first date, you came to impress people, you came to celebrate moments of you know, special happenings in your life. So it was a very special occasion place. And so was pizza. Pizza as a product by nature is round, it is shareable, and it is a social product. Now what changed between say 20 years ago and now is that people are consuming pizzas today on the go. People are consuming pizzas every day. It is no longer a special occasion food consumption. And that has changed to every day, right? So what have we done with ourselves? Our brand was built on physical stores. There was a time when we said the bus is moving in the other direction. Do we need to be on, you know, jumping onto that bus and start moving the brand in the other direction? Now imagine when you are running a brand that has been so successful, India's most loved, trusted brand for 11 consecutive years as polled by Brand Equity. So successful. People love it. Great business. Franchise partners love it. And then you say, hey, by the way, we are not going to be building the brand as a special occasion brand anymore. We're going to be building the brand as an everyday brand. And let me tell you how. It, it takes a lot of you know, clarity of thought and understanding of trends. So that's been our personal journey. Let me introduce you to our store, the Pizza Hut store. But that's a different store. It is what we call the digital store. Right? So Pizza Hut has a physical store and Pizza Hut has a digital store. Our digital store experience used to be I mean, I will not mince my words in saying this pretty crappy as we started. But then we said, you know, what, are, what do consumers need? Consumers first want to know 
if you cannot service me, don't take me through my product choices and topping choices and add-ons and drinks and payment gateway. At that point, you tell me, listen, I can't service you because you're in a different trade area. If you want to tell me you can't service me, give me the bad news right now. And so the first button as you open the Pizza Hut homepage, and this is a mobile app or a mobile site, is locate me. So we use technology, zoom into the customer location and say, can we service you? Now, if that is a big tick, you move into the next section. And the next section is about quickly understanding what pizzas do I need. And because this is a generation that we are talking to, which is I want, what I want, when I want it, right? They want to understand if they can change the toppings, they can change the sauce, they can reduce the cheese, they can increase the cheese. I don't want mushrooms, this, that, and the other. Make sure they have all of that at easy access without any complexity. And after all of that is done, can we give them the easiest, fastest checkout experience without having to put in too much of data? So traditionally in Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, you have to log in, email, this, that. You have to fill up five fields. This is the day and age of OTP. You don't have to log in. You just press a button, you get an OTP, fill up the stuff, and out you go, right? So that is the way we as a brand have transformed ourselves to say, are we talking to millennials, especially who are always mobile first in their approach? And so our site, so when we built our new site, it was M site first, then M app after that, and website as the last priority, right? So that's the way we have kind of, you know, transformed a brand. So that's how our physical store looks like, which is always on demand. I spoke to you about the, um, the Naomi, uh, you know, opportunity. Uh, that exists, that was the last trend, and here is the experience Pizza Hut has gone through on Near Me. Enjoy the video. It is interesting how one initiative can spark brand leadership that is accessible to the consumer each day. This is how it all began. In an increasingly interconnected, mobile-dominated world, local search has been gaining importance. As per Google in India, 95% of smartphone users conduct a local search. 50% of searches on Google are local. 75% of people who use location search on mobile visit a business. And 30% of local mobile searches lead to sale within a day. Against this growing phenomenon, the local search results for Pizza Hut India were a major challenge. In multiple situations, when our customers searched for a nearby Pizza Hut outlet, the search results displayed stores that were either far from the location or were already shut down. The approach, provide relevant search results to our customers. Clearly, we needed a process and team for an efficient local information management. We needed an interface that would detect the customer location and display the nearest available Pizza Hut outlet in the search result. Our partnership with Single Interface, one of the finest location-based marketing platforms, helped in resolving this issue. The method, deployment of an automated location system. We were able to connect our Pizza Hut stores to the search engine via an automated intelligence system that shared and received data in real time. This helped us publish accurate store information across every app, map, search engine, and social platforms. Location pages were created for each store and were optimized for better local search results. Social media feeds and check-ins led to further increase in online traffic and validation of store information. The result, relevant user traffic, more sales. We saw an increase in click-to-calls, click-to-directions, user reach, and orders. Till October 2017, we already reached a monthly average of 97,000 click-to-calls, 36,000 click-to-orders, 110,000 click-to-directions, and a whopping 6.1 million page views. Revenue attributed to local search at Pizza Hut India is north of $8 million per annum. With this one initiative, we have won several national and international accolades. Pizza Hut India has dominated the local search battlefield while successfully keeping the competition at bay. And that's how we made the brand Pizza Hut easy for our customers. Easy to access, easy to navigate, easy to locate. Yeah, so that's been uh, our story. Uh, 
uh, very very inspiring. I mean, it it seems like you know it's such a simple thing. How come you could never think about this? But simple things actually get missed out really. Uh, you know, early in the game. So this particular activity and the results particularly we've got has actually given us a lot of uh, international uh, recognition. The last video I'm going to share with you is uh, augmented reality. Some of you would have seen this. Uh, oops. Can we get the presentation mode back, please? Yep. Thank you. Just get to the last slide and play the video for me. So some of us would have seen this uh, particular thing. We haven't done this thing. It's an idea existing somewhere in the world, but one day it could be a reality. That's, uh, that's the stuff you have there. And uh, uh, this video, I just love this video because of a couple of reasons. One day I hope I can, you know, make it here in India, this kind of virtual reality. But more important, I love the play between the man and the woman. The man wants more toppings, more cheese. The lady says, no, I mean, not so much. Let's go a little low on calories. And so I just love that play that happens between uh, the, the two members over there. So that's it from my side. If there are any questions, happy to answer. Uh, I'll try my best to answer. But uh, if not, then you have a great rest of the day. So ladies and gentlemen, firstly, can we have a round of applause for Mr. Unnath Verma for that very, very interesting presentation, appetizing set of perspectives. We're just going to quickly check for questions from the audience as well. So any questions coming, please raise your hands. We'll have the mic passed on to you. Any questions, ladies and gentlemen? Okay, we seem to have a question from the gentleman there. So I'm going to request you to keep your hands raised. And also please introduce yourself once the mic reaches you. Hi, I'm Om Raheja. I work in the marketing team of Cello. Uh, just I wanted to ask, uh, in the growing day of this competition, how are you facing competition from Domino's? <clears throat> and how big are, are they a competition for you? <clears throat> Hi, Om. Uh, <laughs> it's, a, it's a question where, I mean, I'm asked this question a lot of times, uh, by the way. And, uh, and so my answer is typically that uh, so first of all, when we look at competition in terms of a category, the organized food category is less than 10% of the overall food category. So the competition or really the source of business is outside of the two of us or the four of us or the six of us. The source of business is going to be by basically increasing frequency in India of, of food consumption, outside food consumption. And second is to get a lot of people to move from you know street vendors, mom and pop shops into branded options. So that is in terms of source of business. There's, of course, competition intensity, which is very high when you're doing, uh, you know, bidding on Google. So there's this competition intensity very high when you're, you know, trying to pitch your ad on the most uh, highest rated program on television. So on that, the competition then is not only from within the category, the competition is very, very large. So of course, on Google, it's within the category. 
but uh, but on say you know on Sony on on Z Sony or whatever IPL, the competition is very large. It could come from outside the category as well. So it totally depends on you know what competitive context we are talking about. But here, when you look at uh, if you if if your question is how is competition in the context of growing business, then actually it will be very myopic to say my competition is within the fast food players to the reason I mentioned. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> All right, we have room for just one last question. Any further questions? Yes, sir. Good afternoon, sir. My name is Amar. Uh, I would like to ask one question. Okay, since we actually go through the entire process of how a click can be converted into the conversion, which are the inevitable friction point Pizza Hut still have within the app? There are a lot of friction points right now. We want the page to load in three seconds. It loads in six seconds today. We want, um, so we look at, you know, um, uh, fun, so basically conversions at each step of the journey. And then you basically realize where is the maximum fall that is happening. So there are two areas that are big friction points. There's a huge fall happening on locate me. So one is that, you know, a lot of people convert from search into getting onto the app, but because the app loads or the, or the M site loads slow, six seconds, it's not good for the category. We have a fall there. The second fall we have is on locate me. We don't have enough stores on the ground. We are going to be close to 500 stores by the end of this year, but they're not enough. We need uh, maybe 2000 stores in India. So as to cover each and every nook and corner, of where consumers can potentially order food from. So half the searches actually drop off on Locate Me because we don't have a store servicing them. We, of course, have a great option for them to go and do a pickup from a store, and we offer them a 50% discount for that to happen, right? So that's the other part. And the third part happens really at the bottom of the funnel where there are, there are two friction points, which is about our, our payment gateways take a long time to load, that particular process should be under one second, and we have a slightly longer time there. And, uh, and then, the, uh, then some of the gateways are not very frictionless. So these are things that are kind of you know, more internal and technical, but I just expose you to our, our you know, world-class digital store. This digital store is not where it needs to be from our standards. Of course, the consumers are loving it. We've seen 80% increase in conversions after launching this digital store. But that to us is a very, very small number. It has to be 400, 500% jump. That's where we are. Thanks a lot, sir. Have a good day. Well, on, ladies and gentlemen, on that note, while we call it a wrap to the question session, I'm going to request you, sir, to please remain on the stage. And uh, I'd like to invite on stage the Mo Magic CEO and founder, Mr. Arun Gupta, to please come forward and present a token of gratitude to our keynote speaker, Mr. Unnath Verma. A huge round of applause, ladies and gentlemen.